Hey guys, I'm bringing you this hand here uh, between Alex Foxton and uh, Ike Hexton. They uh, heads up in the Super High Roller Bowl, which is the biggest tournament of the year. And there was this really exciting hand heads up. And uh, yeah, let's uh, jump right into the action and see what happens. Uh, action here, preflop, uh, Alex Foxton coming in for a race of the uh, Queen Deuce. He goes to two and a half times the big mind. Uh, it's already fairly interesting here, especially because they're playing with a big mind anti. You know, that dictates that you're going to be playing a lot of hands, um, which you do heads up anyway, but you're going to be playing even more hands because big blind anti. So you're more incentivized to play your hands. Um, they're like 60 big blinds deep. I think that action is completely reasonable. And uh, yeah, Ike here comes in with a call. Uh, King six of diamonds. Certainly you can three by that at some percentage. It's a good hand to three by. It's an excellent hand to call. Calling's fine. Re-raising is fine. Uh, yeah, let's uh, see how the action continues. Okay, the action here just goes um, checked by Ike, which is very reasonable, you know, you don't want to be betting into the preflop aggressor, heads up. Alex continues with continuation bet around half the pot. Probably very likely because he has the queen of diamonds. Yeah, and Ike continues with a call. Uh, what you can think about this hand is, you don't always want to be betting just because you have the queen of diamonds. If you tend to bet all your queen, queen of diamonds hands, you're just simply going to have way too many of those. So you got to be careful, you know, you can't simply bet every single queen of diamonds. For Ike, check raising is really not that appealing here. You don't have an overcard to the board. Calling is gonna be the winning play. And I would, in Ike's way, I'd play it the same way. In Alex's way, hmm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not always betting the flop, but I can certainly see betting the flop sometimes as well. The turn, action card, completes the flush for Ike. Uh, gives Fox a flush draw, obviously, with his queen of diamonds. Ike always gonna be checking on the turn. No surprise here. Uh, again, this is again another situation where Alex needs to decide does he want to bet or does he want to take the conservative route and check. Um, again, you don't want to be betting always and neither do you want to be checking always. So in order to be a strong heads up player, you gotta sometimes mix up your game a lot and like take unpredictable actions, so to speak. So you can't always just, you know, bet the flop because you have the queen of diamonds and then always bet the turn and then always follow through. So you, you gotta mix it up sometimes, and sometimes you check, sometimes you bet. Here, Alex decides to uh, bet. Again, reasonable. You gotta be careful, though, to not overdo it, which is very easy to do if you take too many of those hands. You know? So yeah, um, Ike has a flush. Um, he basically has no point raising here. Uh, his hand is pretty much invulnerable, so Ike just continues with the call. And uh, let's see what the river brings. Right, exciting stuff here at the end. Um, Ike obviously checks again, no point in ever betting that river. Yeah, and Alex decides to follow through. And the main interesting takeaway here is that when Alex follows through, there is around 1.8 million, 1.9 million in the pot, I'm not exactly sure, but with only three million in your stack, that's less than two times the size of the pot. So the interesting thing here is, what are you representing when you bet the river, right? And the answer to that is, well, pretty much you, you're representing a flush. You know, if you follow through, it's, it's a good play by Alex, as I've explained, you know, it's very reasonable to take that action. But the mistake is, if you do represent very few holdings, very strong holdings, you're supposed to bet as many chips as you can, you know? And uh, so typically just lo looking at this board, you know, if you want to make your opponent consider folding an ace, a hand such as strong as an ace, um, it's gonna be very hard to do so with a bet of around three quarters the pot. It's where you wanna choose an overbetting size to go for the maximum fold equity to apply a lot of pressure. Because if you think about what you have, which is the lone queen of diamonds, you either, you're either bluffing or you have uh, what's close to the nuts. So whenever you have a hand that is sort of, you know, a card that sort of could go in both of those hands, what you wanna do is you wanna bet the maximum and give your opponent a really bad price. Alex doesn't get cute. Just no. pitches it. Just insta mucks. And you're going to have to bluff if you want to play heads up, no limit. Fox and tried. Uh, not this time. Uh, in the end, uh, you know, about this end, you can just say that Alex made a slight mistake on the end and uh, not putting all his money in there. And uh, yeah, I mean, for Ike, the hand pretty much entirely played itself. So there's nothing we can say about him. Yeah, if, if I were in Alex's shoes here, um, again, no, no, all of his actions are perfectly reasonable. Uh, can't criticize his continuation bet. Certainly can't criticize this double barrel. Uh, the only thing I want to you know, point out here is that you can't do this all the time. 
And if you do it, you gotta have, you know, you gotta follow through. You can't just make like a, a half attempt at like taking the pot down. You know, it, it is scary to put all your money in in the bluff. But if you look at what you represent here, which is you're representing the flush, let's face it. Yeah, you gotta put all your all your money in because otherwise you um, it's just not credible.